What's up legends, it is Peter Day here and we are talking burpee broad jumps. So if you are on the internet searching for how to get faster at burpee broad jumps, you have reached an amazing phase of your life. You're probably addicted to high rocks like a lot of us are as well. But jokes aside guys, we absolutely love it. So let's get stuck into it right away. Now this video is gonna be updated for 2024 because there's a slight rule change with burpee broad jumps, which I'll go through. So it's gonna be the standards, the ways that you can do it, how to get faster and some training tips for you guys. So this does not become the hardest station on the day and something you actually maybe even look forward to. Before I get stuck into it guys, if you could click subscribe down below for more high rocks content, more fitness content, I would really appreciate it. And you can also jump onto my website, coachpeterday.com if you want high rocks training programs and there's a bunch of other things on there as well. All right, I want to start off with going through the updates on the technique on this one. And I'm going to read this directly from the high rocks rule book as well. So there is absolutely no questions on what is a good rep and what is a bad rep. So first one is you must start with your hands behind the line before you even make that first jump. So that's the way to start it. When you lower yourself to the ground, your chest must touch the ground clearly. From that position, the athlete stands up and jumps forward, jumping and landing with both feet simultaneously. So you must take off with both feet and land with both feet at the same time. Now here's some of the changes. The feet must be parallel for takeoff and landing. You used to be able to stagger your stance a little bit so long as it wasn't in front of your hands, but now you must have your feet together when you take off and same with landing. And when stepping or jumping up from the lower position, the feet cannot pass the athlete's fingertips. So they're the main standards. You can jump as far as you want. Obviously it's part of the movement as well, but just making sure you really keep your feet together and parallel on the takeoff you land with them together. And also when you step up or jump up, your feet do not go in front of your hands. So they're the movement standards as of 2024 directly from Hyrox. So before we go into your options, let's look at where the burpee broad jumps is in your race. Now it is at a very crucial time. It is basically bang on halfway. You've done the sleds, you've done the skis. So you're somewhere between that 25 to 35 minute portion of your race as well. So this is a crucial time to not send it, be quite efficient with your movements, but still be moving quite fast as well. And this is one, if you haven't got a strategy, it can destroy you. It can ruin your race at this point. And we do not want that. We want to come out of this feeling as good as we can. Um, obviously you won't be feeling fresh at this stage, but a good way to do that is by having a plan in place before you get there. It's also important to look at yourself as an athlete and how you sit with this station too. So if you are more of an endurance athlete, this may be a station which is better for you. I typically seem to find that the people who are better at running and more of that engine aerobic capacity, this is a station which they do do better at versus more of the strength athletes who are you know, coming from say a CrossFit background. Uh, they may be good at this style of movement, but I, generally between the two I find the people who have the more aerobic base, this seems to favor them a little bit more. Uh, also just because of the length of high rocks as a race as well. So it's important to get through this movement efficiently. I think it's the key word I'm gonna be using for this without gassing yourself too much and it is a station where it's gonna suck. <laughs> we just want it to suck a little bit less. All right, so the first thing to decide with your technique is what technique are you gonna use? In reality, there's probably only a two or three different styles of techniques you can use. The main ones being you can step back, you can step up, or you can jump back and jump up, or you can jump back and step up. They're probably the only combinations you can really use within a burpee broad jump. And of course, how you jump as well can make a bit of a difference, especially with your arm movements, which is something a lot of people forget when they are on this station, but it can actually make you jump a little bit further without using too much more energy. And I'll jump on that in a second. So let's start with the way you're getting your body down and up in this movement. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people are doing burpee broad jumps is they go out of the gates really hot. They jump really fast, they're moving up and down quite quickly and they burn themselves out. We don't want that. We wanna be moving smoothly through the station and trying to keep our heart rate as low as possible. The last thing you wanna do is really smash the first 20, 30 meters and you've still got another 50 meters to go on the burpee broad jumps where you really start to slow down because you're gonna push yourself into that anaerobic threshold. Your heart rate's gonna get quite elevated, which we do not want as much as we can at this point. But more importantly, we are trying to conserve ourselves and keep our breathing going, which is again, is something that a lot of people forget when they're doing this one. Especially when it comes to this one, we wanna keep our diaphragm open. We wanna keep our hitching up as much as we can so we get the breathing in there because that's just gonna help us lower our heart rate as much as we can through this movement. My advice with this one is as you come down, two hands on the ground, I like to jump back just because it gets my chest down to the ground and then step forward. And the difference between stepping forward and jumping forward in terms of your time it's not significant and the amount of increased energy it takes to jump forward can actually be quite challenging, particularly when it comes to your breathing and your heart rate. Whereas if you wanna go faster on this station, you're better off using more of your energy on the actual jump 
portion because this is when you're actually moving forward. Stepping up to jumping up, roughly your feet are in the same position. It's not really much of a difference. Arguably, you can probably step up further potentially. I mean, you can only go as far, far as your fingers anyway, but the jump, if you, go, if you wanna go fast this one, that's where you should actually use a little more of your energy versus the actual step up. If you're newer to this, or this is just not your strength as a station, you can step down, step up. I think it's totally fine. It's more moving consistently. Once our feet are up there, the next thing I really look for is that actual jump portion. Now, within the station, you're jumping kind of 25 to 35 times, depending on how you are as an athlete. So what you don't want, you don't wanna be using 100% of your energy to jump forward. It's gonna build up lactic acid. It is an explosive station by default. We wanna to try to jump forward using the least amount of energy as possible. And this is where I really like to use my arms as much as I can to push myself forward as opposed to really exploding out there. There's only so many jumps you can do at max effort until your legs start to blow up. So even when I'm doing this one, I'm not going at a max jump each time. I'm still trying to get some explosive energy out, but I'm not trying to go at max every single jump. As I come forward with that step up technique, other foot, other foot comes forward. I'm then using my arms to propel myself forward as much as possible. Now, it's not going to make a seismic difference to the distance. However, you do move forward a little bit further and it doesn't take much more energy. You don't have to fully swing your arms, but just don't have them static by your side. You're better off with this station to stay consistent on each of the jumps and stay consistent on how you get down and up. I would just practice in training, just being nice and consistent and it's more training for the volume of this as opposed to the explosive energy. What I find people do quite a lot is they practice burpees without the jump and the jumps what actually takes up more of the energy expenditure in this movement versus is getting up and down with your chest. In terms of training, I'd practice which leg comes up first. So for me personally, I always have my right leg coming up first. I know some people alternate, nothing wrong with that. Some people use the left leg. I just use the right. I'm a little bit more mobile on that side. I probably shouldn't be, but I just am. I like to put my right leg up first because it just stays consistent on each and every jump as well. But again, just know which one you're gonna do or how you're gonna do it or how you're gonna approach this. If you wanna go faster in this station, work the jump, not getting down and up. Now, the reason I say this one is the jump is what moves you forward. You might be able to take out a few jumps before you get to the end there. Whereas coming up and down with a bit more speed, it actually, as you come down, that movement of going down and up, it really works your midsection quite a lot. So you, your abs are on fire. It, your diaphragm's closed up in that bottom position there. So it puts a lot of pressure on your midsection there as well, which actually doesn't give you much opportunity to breathe. It's one of the reasons why this one's so challenging. So you want to keep your chin up as you're coming down, keep the breathing going, keep the diaphragm open and getting as much oxygen as you can in on the station. Then when you get to that top position there, that's when you do your jump. Now, if you get fatigued in the station, I actually like to rest at the bottom, not in that standing position for a few different reasons. Number one, you let your whole body relax a little bit and you can still breathe as long as your chest is up. Number two, you've already done half the movement. So when you do get to go, you're two feet up and you're straight back into that jump as opposed to getting down, getting up, and then into that jump. So if you are gonna rest on this one, jump forward, pop down, breathe, and then get strapped back into it. Training tips for this one, obviously training burpees is really gonna help you, but training them fatigued is what's gonna get you a better outcome. A lot of people I know train doing burpees themselves, but you wanna practice the actual jump and get used to that technique. What you do not wanna do is get a time penalty or some kind of penalty for having your feet staggered, for example, because you haven't practiced for it and you also don't wanna rush it too much. So when you're doing this movement, I'd highly recommend in training, practice the length of it and do it a couple times in the week as well, especially fatigue. Because of where it is in the race, you're never gonna come into the station feeling fresh. So that's the other thing too, you wanna to try to make sure the stimulus is as accurate as it is to a race day, which in this scenario is halfway through a race, you're 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes down, and you're quite fatigued as well. But practicing that get up and jump, is a really good way to do it. Another thing you can do in training, and I've done this before, is I'll actually practice by jumping my two feet up and then jumping forward. Now, I don't do that because I'm gonna do that on race day. I do that because it's harder, so when I do it on race day, it feels easier. And this is a technique I used to use when I did swimming. It's overloading what that movement is or what that distance is or whatever it might be, but it's a great way to train because you get used to the harder form or the harder way to do it. So when it comes to the race day, it feels a little bit, that little bit easier as well. So again, you can choose that technique if you want to. Um, I just love it with all my training I've ever done. 
and it's a really good way to um, overload that movement in particular. But for this one, yes, you can practice you know, things that work your chest, for example, but it's more about lactic through the legs and it's more about the aerobic conditioning that comes with this particular movement, uh, as opposed to what a lot of people think it is, which is a lot more like chest, uh, explosive energy from the bottom, which it's not in this particular exercise as much as it is of the jump. If you have any other training tips or techniques, please drop them in the comments down below. You can jump onto my website, coachpeterday.com for Hyrox training programs. And also there's a place you can start working with me one-on-one -on -one if you wanna do that as well. Other than that guys, please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below as well. Feel free to send this to a friend or tag them in it as well. So that way they can also get those tips and good luck on your next race day.